In this video, we are going to take a look at the Bering 70, a steel hulled explorer yacht that is just as content cruising along beautiful coastlines as she is crossing oceans as you venture off to the picturesque places in the world where you have always wanted to visit. Join me as we take a walk around the Bering 70 after I had a chance to check her out in person at the Khan Yachting Festival. Of course, not only will we be taking a look inside her pilot house, but we will also be checking out her impressive engine room. So make sure you stay tuned and remember to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my other videos following my visit to the first boat show of the season. Since Bering Yachts was launched in 2012, I've been a big fan of their boats. I made my first video about a Bering boat over two years ago, back in July 2020, and since then I've made 12 videos. So it was great to finally get my feet on the deck of a Bering. Let us start on the swim platform before heading into the galley and saloon. As you can see, the swim platform on the Bering 70 is huge. The passerelle is located on the port side of the transom. The transom door that leads into the engine room and crew quarters, which we will take a look at later, is located amidships and the stairs leading up to the cockpit are located on the starboard side. On this Bering 70, which is hole number two of the Bering 70 range, the galley is located aft as you walk through the saloon door. The counter space has also been doubled, making the galley on this boat a very comfortable and easy space to work in. Although it's unusual to find the galley located here, I can see how its position aft means that this Bering 70 is great for entertaining guests. As we enter the saloon, the huge windows allow lots of natural light to fill the area. The black high gloss finish was requested by the owner. The seating area in the saloon is very large, meaning that you can easily entertain up to 10 people inside. The black high gloss finish is actually a very labor intensive and costly bespoke feature, but Bering Yachts were happy to accommodate the owner's request for this contemporary finish. In my opinion, it gives an almost future-proof feel to this Bering 70. Although you cannot see it, concealed in this bulkhead is a very large TV. The door to the pilot's house, which we will check out shortly, can be found on the starboard side. And, of course, a separate pilot's house means that you can easily cruise at night without having to worry about the noise or lights from the saloon distracting the crew from overnight passages. The stairs down to the accommodation area can be found here on the port side. Next, let us head up to the flybridge. The stairs to the flybridge are located on the port side of the cockpit. The full helm on the bearing 70 means that the vessel can be fully operated from this position. All of the vital alarms, navigation equipment and engine controls can be found in this state-of-the-art helm position. As with all bearings built up to the date that this video was published, the nav and radar suite is kitted out with Furuno Electronics. On the starboard side of the flybridge on the Bering 70, we find a comfortable and large seating area. You can easily accommodate eight people in this combined seating and lounging area. The commanding views from the flybridge are breathtaking. And of course, we have a hard top with a removable enclosure that can be used when you want to protect yourself and your guests from the elements. Aft we have another galley that is kitted out with a grill, two burners, a large sink, a fridge and a freezer. Under the crane is where we find the fuel storage for the tender where you can fit around 80 gallons of fuel. The steelhead crane has a lift capacity of 1500 pounds, which is more than enough lift to hoist the 3.6 metre 5 seater tender. Located on the port side and mirrored on the starboard side, we find a life buoy as well as a life raft. Two things you never want to head to sea without having.
Next, let us head down onto the foredeck. I like the straight up and down windows on the Bering 70s pilot house. They help to give it a unique look and feel. Note also the three LED lights, one facing dead ahead with one to starboard and one to port. The gunnels on the Bering 70 also have a handrail for extra safety. Now before we check out the pilot's house and engine room, let us have a look at the guest, master and crew accommodation. The stairs leading down to the accommodation can be found on the port side of the saloon. We will start by having a look inside the midship starboard twin cabin. The twin bunks in the cabin are actually quite large and are very wide for a single bunk. It's a perfect cabin if you are going to be travelling with teenagers. The indirect lighting also helps to give a very ambient, comfortable and relaxing feel to this space. Next, let us take a look inside the forward VIP cabin with ensuite. Again, we find the black high gloss finish that we found in the saloon with lots of indirect LED lighting. The ensuite has plenty of room and is finished with a very interesting decor that again, I loved and I think gives this whole area lots of character. The rectangular portholes allow lots of light to flood into this area making it feel bright and airy, without compromising that all-important privacy. Of course, the blinds can be shut as and when you need complete privacy or if you want to get some shut-eye during the day. Next, let us have a look in the full beam master cabin. The midship's location of the full beam master means that out of all the accommodation, it will be the least affected by pitch and rolling. To the port side of the large bed, we find a big walk-in wardrobe that has lots of storage space and of course, a large mirror. As someone who is used to traveling the world with just a backpack, personally, I would find it hard to fill this much storage space. The master cabin also benefits from huge windows. There is a large flat screen TV that is set in a cutout in the bulkhead. As we head over to the starboard side of the master cabin, we find an L-shaped seating area. This area provides a fantastic bolt hole for when you just want to unwind and relax. I love the shower with its indirect lighting. I'm six foot four and there was plenty of space and more importantly, headroom. My regular viewers will know just how much I love indirect lighting, mainly because it plays such an important part in creating a calm and relaxing ambiance, which is invaluable if you are spending any considerable amount of time at sea. But what do you think of this master cabin? Let me know in the comments below. Now let us take a look at the crew accommodation which can be found in the stern of the vessel. Having spent five years at sea on several warships, I find this accommodation elegant. There are two decent sized bunks and the finish in here is to a very high standard. Next we come to the engine room. Hole number two of the Bering 70 range of explorers is fitted with twin John Deere engines. Access to the engine room is via the transom door and through the crew quarters. Both the port and starboard engines on the Bering 70 are located beneath deck panels. The standard engine fit on the 70 comprises twin Cummins QSB9 285 brake horsepower engines, which give her a top speed of 10 knots and a cruising speed of 8 knots. At 8 knots, then you can expect a range of around 3,000 nautical miles. Next we come to my favourite place aboard any vessel, the pilot's house. And the pilot's house on the Bering 70 does not disappoint. Starting off on the port side we have the CCTV monitor. Moving amidships we have a large digital chart monitor. Whilst over to the starboard side we have another multifunction display. On the dashboard we have the bow and stern thrusters, the port and starboard engine controls, a monitor for the engines, and a control panel for the CCTV cameras. 
As with most helm stations, there are additional controls on the overhead, starting with the bilge pump control panel, as well as lots of other repeater controls and switches, the rudder angle indicator, and the exterior and floodlight control panel, as well as the navigation light control panel on the starboard side. Access to the pilot's house from the upper deck is via either a door on the port or their starboard side. After the helm position, there is a large sofa that can also be used as another bunk if it's needed. So what do you think of this pilot's house on the Bearing 70? Let me know in the comments. It was great to finally get aboard a Bearing. Having followed their journey for the last 10 years and having made quite a few videos about different models, I was really excited to actually get my feet on the deck. In summary, this Bering 70 is the sort of vessel that you could quite easily take across the Atlantic, regardless of the weather conditions, whether you want to travel in the summer months or in the winter months. I would be more than happy to take my wife and two children on this boat, even if I knew I was gonna be heading into some gnarly weather. When you walk around the Bering 70, you just feel like you're on a very sturdy, very safe and very capable boat. This 70 foot steel hold Explorer is just as comfortable cruising around the coast as it is crossing oceans. And that's because of her low draft. The Bering 70 has a maximum draft of 1.5 meters, which is four foot eight inches. As I said earlier on in the video, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my other videos that I filmed during the Khan Yossin Festival. I got the chance to get on some truly stunning boats and I can't wait to share them with you. Please don't forget to give the video a like. Check out the video in the top left hand corner because it's one of my videos that YouTube thinks you're gonna love. And also don't forget to browse through my playlist. If you've got a boat you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, feel free to get in contact. Until next time, fair winds and following seas.